Cinefix Roundtable. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Cinefix Roundtable. We got everybody in the same room all at the same time, talking about all the cool stuff that happened this week. Uh, and to start off, we're just going to jump right into the next Star Trek movie. Star Trek 3, colon, TBD. Mm -hmm. uh, being directed by Roberto Orsi. Now, Roberto, Roberto in top of being a really difficult name for me to say, uh, he's written all kinds of stuff, including previous Star Trek movies and Transformers and all that kind of and stuff. And produced. And produced. A great deal. A lot of good TV under his belt, too. Mm -hmm. uh, never directed a thing. I'm sure mm -hmm. he's got a good student film. <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, yeah. He's probably got a great. Yeah, has he directed like right theater, right like dunk theater? I mean, has he direct, uh, you know, maybe a, maybe a, a street, a street <laughs> performance or something? He's directed a flash mob, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Directed <laughs> traffic. Has he has he had a conversation with an actor before? Maybe I'm, I'm sure three or four. As writer, As most directors not. don't do that. Most yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mostly about like that's actually not what I wrote. Yeah, Brett, the Brett Ratner <laughs> School of Film Directing. Hey, can what, you what's just happening? Stare at the <laughs> tennis ball. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, move the camera like this, not like this. Oh, actor, you're fine. I can't see the camera. There's a whore in the way. <laughs> Wait, are you still doing Brett Ratner? What? Yes. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> he will crowbar right. in shitting on Brett Ratner. Yeah, whenever possible. That's a new record, I think. <laughs> I mean, is there any way that that can go wrong? Because it's like the third one, it's already on rails. Like, there's so many people that are have sort of oversight yeah. on this. It's going to be a C. But it's just, it's interesting to me that a studio will give as much importance as being as, as placed on these tentpole movies. They're giving it to a guy who's never done it before. Done it's almost close. like they're giving it to him as a gift. Like, here you go. I, Here's a huge first directing yeah. credit. Isn't that why Shatner got uh, Star Trek V? Because Nimoy had gotten it and they had an equal, <laughs> equality clause in their contracts. Like, isn't that part? Probably. Like, I think that is actually, you know, a good tr chunk of why that went down. Yeah, and also, to be fair, like, the Star Trek franchise did get a lot of people who have never directed before directing. And like Jonathan Frakes. Yeah, and LeVar yeah. Burton and Roxanne Dawson pop up on an episode of TV like once a week, directed by, you right. know? Yeah, so like it's kind of falling into the tradition, which is nice. But then again, this is like what it's going to be like a $200 million movie. Yeah, yeah. So well, like the I thing is, right. like the movie's going to get made because the producers. Are, have already basically determined what the movie is. Or three fourths of it's going to be CG and, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's got to have all been mapped out in previs anyway. Well, and, and I think also what they're looking at. I mean, if you look at this, the, the, the franchises that he's been a part of have made so much money, mm -hmm. and I think they just look at the dollar signs. They're not. They know they can find somebody to set up the camera. Literally doesn't matter I don't think that there true. is a director, is what you guys are saying. <laughs> no, but I no, think no, that no, you need someone to say stand there. They're, they're foolproof to get done. Right? They're foolproof to get done. The effects supervisors end up directing half the action anyway. Yeah. You know, I, I, but I, I think there's also a longer story here because, I mean, again, if you look at how young he was when he got started, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how consistently the guy has gotten work and successful work, I think for a long time he's been saying, I want to direct, I want to direct, I want to direct. And it's, it's not, you know, you do see people, like I say, you pull them out of nowhere. I think that this guy is a very smart guy, and they recognize. And there's the money part of it, right. but I think they just go like, "This guy's a f smart guy," and, sm and they're probably saying like, "He's smarter than Brett Ratner." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what went down in that executive producers meeting. No, I, I, I this, this could be a terrible idea. He could turn out a less good movie than a more experienced director would have. But he will turn out a movie because there are other ducks that are in a row and a DP and a first AD will will help a first time director make something. I just think that's such a low bar to set though because we're sitting here talking about it's like, yeah, I mean, it'll get done. Yeah. yeah. It's like, no it'll I mean, no done. kidding, it'll get done. And it'll be like, well written because it's Orsi, right? Right. Sure. Well, that's well written in the... It, it'll have it'll have a what three out of five chance of being well written <laughs> well, based on RC, be, which is pretty good be, odds. You had a really good point actually because he's starting out so big that if he if he f this one up, that's it. That's yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah, that's like true. I, so he, he I got, mean, these franchises do they they do drive themselves in a lot of ways, and they are driven by the studio. But you know, you, I mean, you still need a director. Like you still need a director, and in, in a lot of ways, you need the director more on these big. You need a voice steering. It's a big ship to steer, and you Make need sure one voice up top. Movie, right? So if it, if you if it's just you know Orsi in over his head, and then you've got you've got the you know the AD and the line producer and the studio exec and the second unit director and the C, and and all of them are pulling in different directions. Like it could easily be a cluster. 
Yeah. Uh, and now that that being said, you know, Orsi's a really respected guy. Yeah. yeah. So everybody he I knows mean, what he's doing. Yeah. He right. might. He, I, it's not like he's a stranger. It's not like it's the first set yeah. he's ever walked on. Right. But you know, it's just curious to me that they're giving it to a guy who's never directing, it. and it's it's huge. It's going to be a three hundred million dollar movie probably. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, as uh, we've said, you know, he's not experienced to say Brett Ratner or LeVar Burton as a director. Sure. Sure. But I'm excited to see how he does because, you know, it's it's a peculiar choice on the studio's behalf, but I'm still interested to see what he does with it. You know, he's got a, he's got big shoes to fill. He has experience handling things where th- lots of people need lots of answers from you. Um, I, I will right say at, at, at one point, the guy who had who did the last GI Joe movie was like in the running to direct the, the next Star Trek, oh so I'm glad that's not. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, this is better that's than a good. That. That's a good thing. I feel like he's not responsible Jack for that movie. Too, no, nobody's responsible. Like, that's the thing. Nobody's nobody, responsible that for that movie like, because yeah. there wasn't a, a yeah there there wasn't like a, a voice guiding that ship, yeah. and it, and it. It was the only movie ever to be advertised in two consecutive Super Bowls because it got like <laughs> delayed. Because it got so delayed yeah. for 3D. Uh, for Channing. For, for one more scene of Channing Tatum. <laughs> Which was the best part of the movie? Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Watching The Rock and Channing Tatum play yeah. Call of Duty. That was right. <laughs> best thing. I left shortly after that. So. Yeah. All right, well, from one giant mega franchise straight to another, we got a new Transformers trailer oh. this week. And Mark, I know you were very upset. Oh, yeah, I was upset oh, at no, IO9, no. actually. Oh, IO9 man. reported on that being like, it's all fuzzy science. And what, what did they say? They, they, they said, said uh, well, they're talking about a molecularly unstable atom, but apparently they didn't watch the trailer because what they said in verbatim, Okay, oh, there we go. Uh, it's it's the greatest advance in modern physics since the splitting of the atom and the creepy British voice. A rare metal, molecularly unstable. It's what they're made of, right? And so I was read the IO9 article. Everybody's panicking, be like, ah, fuzzy science and all that. And I was, uh, I did a little Wikipedia. Uh oh. You know, oh Snow into it. Bricks. Um, into you Wikipedia. Know, <laughs> so basically, an unstable metal is a highly radioactive metal. Mm-hmm. But it's very uh, dense and malleable. Um, so what they're showing in the trailer is this metal that's suddenly transforming shapes, it's moving all over the place, and nobody's getting cancer or getting radiation burns. So I've deciphered from simply this trailer that what they're talking about is they figured out a way to sort of contain the radioactive fallout. Uh, wow. These metals, and albeit I probably put more thought into it than the writers of this movie. <laughs> that sounds way too um, intelligent. But to me. <laughs> what it really means is that in the future, the greatest advancement since the splitting of the atom is Dinobots, and I think that's the most badass thing in the world. Say, say. And uh, the last thirty seconds of that trailer is him riding into battle on top of Grimlock. Yeah. He can turn into a truck. Why would you ride a? Dinosaur. <laughs> it's a dinosaur. <laughs> this is the fourth yes. one. Fourth, yeah. Because I'm like you. To me, it it's feels all, like a lot more. It's all well. It's that, but it's also like it's all just one long horrible movie. The only person who wins in the Transformers universe are all the contractors that have to That's rebuild. A, yeah. Every time. True. Yeah, so well, that's going to be some overtime there. Yeah. There's a lot of water damage. Uh, At what point do you just <laughs> stop building cities? <laughs> we'll just do hamlets. Yeah. Just underground. Transformers 7, humanity has moved underground. Yeah. Truly, when you watch the, the trailer, like at the end, you just laughed and said, what a pile of <laughs> Right? Wasn't that more or less what you said? <laughs> oh, the Grandpa really Truly really sitting up on his porch. It's Because I, I had the same reaction. Now that I'm trying to throw you under the bus, but it's, it's just this... Dangly set of keys that's just the keys everything is like, hey, look Mark how much Wahlberg. noise is here. This girl can't afford a full set of pants. <laughs> uh, Mark Wahlberg, I think we found a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's. Uh, did you did you wait. not see the giant robot? Oh, uh, <laughs> here we go. I, I saw it in the first three movies. No, the dinosaur. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I bet that really changes how buildings are going to get smashed. Just gonna, Again, why does a truck need to ride a dinosaur? Because it's badass. I think, <laughs> honestly, it's not. It's a poor use of you being a truck. <laughs> but it's 
dinosaur. Because he doesn't year. have arms when he's a truck. <laughs> you look really cool when you're riding a robot dinosaur, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, how you, that's how you get the robot chicks. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, there was one trailer that had uh, Optimus Prime fighting Grimlock, and then the next one he was riding Grimlock. So there's clearly a montage yeah. of him taming a robot dinosaur. That, and that's... That's what I'm excited about. There's a about. whole different Transformer that turns into a lasso that the truck uses <laughs> to lasso the dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> so that he can break it. Moving on from all of these giant mega franchises, uh, the, one of the great things that happened this week was was Neighbors did really well yeah. on its opening weekend. It's uh, not so they spent something like 18 million to make it, big R-rated comedy, uh, and it, it went it went off. It made a shitload load of money. Yeah, I love when great. things like this happen because the Studios have gotten to the point where they're just throwing money into these huge movies, and it, it's become sort of a hit or miss game. Like if you can get a franchise going, like you can sort of print money out of that. But then you have things like The Lone Ranger, which didn't perform well, regardless of how good or how bad it was. Um, I think I remember there being some history with The Lone Ranger there. No? Just assuming okay. you like the, the Lone no. Ranger, we're going to move on without letting you defend yourself. But, uh, it, it, it's become, and every time this sort of happens, like. Everybody kind of sits up and takes notice. It's like, look what you can make with 18 million. I mean, you still have marketing costs on there, but still, that's so much less money uh, in terms of your investment. Yeah, it was like a 400% return on investment in just the opening weekend, which is why Forbes wrote an article about it, because they like return on investment. And like The Hangover was the same way. Like, here was a movie yeah. that was 35 million, and it became this massive success that they ended up getting three franchises out of, right. regardless of how terrible they went downhill, kind of like Transformers. Yeah, so, Neighbors 2 coming in 2016. It's going to yeah. be real bad. For real. Or it's going to be exactly the same, exactly and then the third the one's going to be real bad. <laughs> We're going to get more yes. kids. Okay, Neighbors. so. Are well, you I like this because it also gives, <laughs> makes Seth Rogen relevant again, because he was sort of. Popular was teetering. He went away a little bit. Well, he was he was getting overexposed for a while there. It was just like he was in too much. Well, he directed the until the end of the world or what's it called? This This is the this is the end. No, I thought he didn't. He not direct that. No, he, did, no. he and and Evan Goldberg wrote it. Yeah. But. Oh, okay. But that did that did well, didn't it? Yeah. Did yeah. yeah. Another cool. one that was relatively inexpensive. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, what an indie movie is considered nowadays is <laughs> yeah. it depends on who you talk to. But <laughs> only a fifty you know, million it, dollar effects budget or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like it's a relatively inexpensive <laughs> movie that had a really great no, return. That's what's been going on with R-rated comedies for about ten years now, though. It's just like people keep making this discovery as if it's a new mm-hmm. thing yeah. but it, every it, time a movie does. Well. Sure, like they come down, yeah, all like, yeah. the studios it's will like, be afraid to make an yeah. R-rated comedy again because yeah. they're right. totally forgotten. And Forbes yeah. wrote it up like the R-rated comedy or the comedy is the new tentpole. It's a new tentpole means the sure thing that props up your earnings for the year. Comedies are not sure things. Like there was no guarantee. You there was no indication whatsoever going in that neighbors. Would, Zac like, Efron also, like, versus Seth Rogen was not a right. did not seem to be the right kind of chemistry there. But there's also this weirdness, like there's a complete lack of memory when it comes to these movies being successful. I mean, we've seen this happen time and time again in recent years. You know, back in the 80s, of course, was sort of like the heyday of the R-rated comedy. And then for some reason that kind of stopped and it came back old school movies like this. And for whatever reason, even though we've seen continuously that a lot of times if these movies are funny enough, if they're written well, they make a lot of money and they don't cost that much. Everyone's surprised when it happens again. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not surprised the Hangover 3, like, movie did because it looked like a piece of shit. I don't watch that. But if a movie's actually funny, you can usually tell and it'll probably make money. Well, it, you don't even have to go that far back because Bridesmaids did the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Bridesmaids oh, yeah. did the exact same thing. It made a ton of money and everybody's like, oh my God, all right, comedy's surprised? back. Yeah. It's like, no, yeah. it's just like just actual comedy right. works. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That one we discovered that like female-centered movies yeah. can also make money, which I think we've forgotten again for the next six Pretty months. Pretty much so immediately then, they forgot. Well, especially yeah. No, because they the, made the other woman. <laughs> <laughs> That actually, that did, actually well did super too. well. Yeah. Huge look at well. The, look at the uh, the talent too. I mean, when you see those those crops of comedians come up, and you you look at like bridesmaids is a, is a great example of that, or like the you know somebody like the the guys in Hangover, Zach Galifianakis, these people that what, as long as you have those people behind it and you have a good script, that's obviously where yeah. uh, comedy comes from. And also when it's like not clearly a cash grab, because I yeah. think the yeah. audience felt insulted by the Hangover two and three. Right, right. I heard uh, Judd Apatow did an interview and he he was talking about exactly that. He was talking about like when Super Bad when they made that. Those guys have been writing that movie for ten years, mm-hmm. and by the time they got to make it. 
the guys who originally wrote it, it was Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, they, it was, they were too old to play those kids. Mm -hmm. And, and it, he said, you know, look, that's, this is because they, this is a story they really wanted to tell, and that's why it's so good. Yeah. It's not just like, oh, we got to get a paycheck. And, and you, you see that with Bridesmaids as well, because you see the knockoffs, and you see the knockoffs, you just can tell from the beginning the story doesn't quite hold together. It's, it's like a bad animated film right. versus something like Finding Nemo. You can see when all the pieces are there. Mm -hmm. And when the pieces are not there, when it's just like, let's have, hey, let's have uh, Adam Sandler get hit in the nuts with a baseball bat. Don't even say uh, Adam yeah. Sandler <laughs> right now. You immediately are, are like, you can tell it's just, it's just like we're trying to get a, a, a certain exit. Well, X dollars, cooler. and we'll try to make X amount. We're X trying to make a comedy tentpole. You can tell yeah. when the, they're trying to make a comedy yeah. tentpole. The problem with the short memory, especially with comedies, is, is like when, when you start chasing a formula, like you can chase the formula to a certain extent with a movie like Transformers with these big franchises right. because you got it, you know, you get there, there are literally formulas for that. Yeah, There's like an algorithm that's that like if I get this sure. star, this, this writer and this director, you can put that in the thing, blah, 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 I'll make X amount of dollars overseas and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, like, but with comedy, like comedy to really work, like, like I said, you gotta get all the pieces working in the same, moving in the same direction. And when you start chasing a formula with a comedy, like it's yeah. just gone completely. You can also spot it when they have like a non-comedian because somebody has worked out their spreadsheet and said, if we put this person in this movie, yeah. it'll make a, and then you're like, he, she or he's not funny. Oh, yeah. oh. And it's just the worst <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's just like, wait, why is Salma Hayek in this? Yeah. 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 But I mean, I, I, feel like, I feel like Rose Byrne is actually an example of that that really worked out. Yeah. Because I don't think yeah. anybody expected her Playing to be hilarious. But she, she, awesome. she had some street cred from her performance in Bridesmaids, I think. Yeah, well, the oh, no, Bridesmaids no, is the one that's Right, yeah. right, right, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think it's been it's been very awesome of Seth Rogen, who on Howard Stern this week was referred to as a stoned mogul. Uh, <laughs> I think it's been really awesome that he hasn't, like, gone back to those wells over and over. He hasn't done Super Bad 2. Yeah. He hasn't done This Is The End again. You know what I mean? And is that so much him or the comedy community in general just kind of being like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Well, and, and Judd Apatow. You look like a f***ing idiot. And Judd yeah. Apatow again said that. You know, he... he he worked for so long, you know, working mm -hmm. for Gary Shandling. Like he saw how you fuck up in Hollywood, and he said he was saying how you're you're walking this tightrope. And so when those guys are coming up, he can say, "Here's what you probably don't want to do. You might want to stick it out and wait to make this movie until you get the right people. If you if you if you rush it and you're desperate and you make those desperate plays, you're gonna burn it out so so fast." And, and it's so, completely transparent to the audience too. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like a first album. Like a band works on an album for three years and it's great, and then their second album comes up six months later and it sucks. I mean, right. it's just because it's like go 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 do another one. Yeah, go. exactly. Uh, well, you're still vaguely relevant. <laughs> and then it's just and it's just G C. Make another one while you still But yeah, I, I do think that that you know with all the the mega franchises and the Marvel movies and the superhero this and that, like it is nice to see that there is still room for a movie like this to do really well. You know. Because it's like it's all but gone away. Everybody's it's either it's either like ten million dollar movies or three hundred million dollar movies. Mm -hmm. There's and for me, that's like refreshing because like Transformers four or whatever, yeah. like <laughs> that is going to be the most exhausting movie on the planet. <laughs> not that it's not going to be fun or anything like that, but by the end of it, it's everyone's going to be like <laughs> <laughs> post traumatic stress. Yeah. There's not going to be anything new. Around. Not going to be anything yeah. surprising. Exactly. It's going to be like we could probably just. Why don't we review it right now? Yeah, honestly, like, <laughs> it was fun. There was a lot of action. She there were some really parts not. that didn't quite make yeah. sense. The like, sound well, design was like, excellent. Yeah, loud. Yeah. It'll get nominated wow. for three Technical Academy Awards. <laughs> yep. Optimus Prime speech at the end is going to be very dis. Dis <laughs> and this, uh, <laughs> disconnected. Yeah, it's not um, going to make sense. It's because they will have forgotten what movie they're making by that. I always feel for him because it always feels like he's. Put on the spot to give a great spot. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. It's like, it's like, oh, uh, it's like hey, uh, last time. humanity and robots will yeah. live together forever. Well, that sort of opens up the conversation again. Just like, what are we looking forward to? Because there's like Maleficent. what Maleficent yeah. is really? going to be a good one. Yeah. I'm psyched. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah, with the cheekbones. I am. <laughs> with the Angelina Jolie. Shouldn't she be at the with UN? That. I feel like this is the role she was born to play. Speaking of fairy tales, the teaser for uh, Cinderella came out today. Did anybody see this like yeah. glass slipper it's of nothingness? It's a beautiful 3D model glass slipper. I, so, I was like, I knew the teaser was coming out for days. 
And then nothing. And CinemaCon, yeah. back in March, they saw like this huge extended yeah, trailer. They had, like, like, and they said it was great. Stuff. And everybody's all been excited about it. I, I Me, love all that excited. The teaser is approved for all audiences. <laughs> and so there's anything in it that could possibly be There's some, there's some foot fetish part of the audience that <laughs> should probably not watch this. Actually, I, I heard that, like I heard that they hit a dick in there somewhere. You <laughs> yeah. just have to look really no, hard. It's Disney, so there's I a dick in there somewhere. I see if there were some reflections of characters in the glass flares. There was oh, nothing. Cool. It was just... It was a just cool a poster. Story. I loved the poster, but the teaser trailer was just the poster with like four hundred thousand dollars of three D modeling thrown at it. To be honest, like I, I saw that link and I was like, oh great, yes. trailer for uh, for Cinderella. And then I copied it and emailed it to all of you guys because like we might talk about this. And then I watched it like two hours later and I was like, I don't want to talk about that. There's nothing here. So what else are we excited about? There's Maleficent. We got Cinderella. I guess we're I'm excited, excited for it. Okay. They they announced that uh, uh, Nicholas Winding Refn's next movie is going to be like it's like his The Shining yeah. is going to do a horror movie mm -hmm. yeah, that's following that exciting. girl that just ended up in a water tower yeah just floating like up there and then, well that's yeah. a, that's a messed up story yeah, yeah. it's and like did you guys follow I, that, got that link yeah. and I like I had never watched it before the security cam of her yeah the, this in the last elevator footage, and she's out. like talking to somebody who's not there so, so what, she's what's like crazy about out, this is she was this you know, I guess middle class girl, I think from Canada? Yeah, she was from she Canada. She was in this flop. No. What, is, what is this about? What? I don't have a problem with Canada. But, but uh, I'm baffled by your... By your response here. Keep, keep it moving. <laughs> anyway. She ends up in the water tower on top of this real flop hotel downtown Los Angeles. And what's, cr what's really horrible it, which is so great for somebody writing a script is she was in the water tower on top and people use that water to shower with. Oh yeah, all the time. So people this. in the hotel, people in the hotel were showering with the corpse juice yeah. from this woman who was in the, <laughs> who was in the, he's cracking up, who was in the, the water tank on top of the hotel and they were kind of like, yeah, I noticed the water was a funny color. Yeah. And, and you know, it's Brad like, Ratner again. That boy, Brad Ratner actually has a suite in that. He showered, <laughs> no. he kept showering for days right. afterwards even when they told him to stop. Yeah. So yeah. that's a great movie for him to make. Yeah. And I'd say for a guy who is not from LA, whatever you think about the movie Drive, I think he did a really great uh, job of capturing his own vision of LA, not really LA as it is, but a stylized version of LA and around MacArthur Park, around downtown. He has an amazing sense of place. Well, yeah, and that's why I'm really excited about him doing a haunted house movie. Well, let us know what you think about all this down in the comments below. Make sure to click like and subscribe and come back next time for more movie news on Cinefix Now. Check out the Godzilla uh, musical. <laughs> yeah. That too. Mom, I already forgot. I can't remember songs. The songs are, are out of my head now. Little city. There it is. Oh, and it's Obama. back. I believe. <laughs> Every attack like, that like the time before. before. Tokyo. Tokyo. <laughs> Filled with panicked <laughs> people. <laughs>